All right, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to Hawaii. This is, I think, gonna be the final video. And I am, again, out here with sun sunglasses on, shoes off, shoes off, shoes off. I know, we're wearing socks, I get it. I've heard all the jokes, but we're trying to get rid of all the golfer tan lines. Also, mine's kind of bad, because I have like the sock tan line, and the jogger tan line, and then the foot tan line. That was free content. I don't know why I just gave you guys all that for free. But the question that you guys have been wondering, has joining Good Good made me a worse golfer? We'll get right into that. I will hit first. Okay, well you made an albatross on the last hole, so I'm not really jumping in front of an albatross. <laughs> Good albatross. Uh, I'm just gonna hit. Also, that shot was 174, adjusted, took off a little on a seven. I think Sean's going with the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're a great mind, and so why do anything different other than what you say? Go in. Go in. <laughs> <laughs> Might be putting. Might be. Good <laughs> night. Also, we're going with the uh, barefoot. Just chill vibes out here in Hawaii. Last day here. Might as well just relax, have our fun out here, but we're gonna go with a little Q&A. We've also had a few Mai Tais deep, so. We're gonna be more open with our answers. Yeah, exactly, yeah. that's right, that's right, <laughs> loosen us up. But I asked some questions on my Instagram for you guys to ask me on this video. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, I'll put that right here. Here's Sean asking some questions from the Instagram. Yeah, all right, so first question here we got. Shout out Nemo Williams 7 is when did you start to see yourself really improve at golf? I've actually made a video on this a long time ago. This was like in 2019 in New Zealand. The moment I started seeing like noticeable big jumps in improvement was when I started working on my wedge distances. Started really dialing it in, like not just only hitting 70, 80, 90 with one wedge, but like I can hit a 90 yard shot with my 55 degree and I can also hit it with my 60 degree. So I can kind of like differentiate the amount of spin that's on my wedges and hit the same yardage. Um, what about you, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it was just really getting smarter, right? right? Like just like understanding more so like how to play the game instead of like, obviously you get to a certain point where you are able to hit a lot of the shots, but like, what should I be doing on this shot? You know, maybe yes. I shouldn't be taking on that flag, things yes. like that, a little, a lot of course management stuff. Right, I, I, I agree a lot with that because I had that same kind of jump in college where, I mean, I feel like I've said it a decent amount of times in my videos, but I didn't know how to actually play golf until I got to college. Like all I did when I was growing up was like playing golf swing. Yeah, and that's a good point. And when I got into college, I was like, I actually learned how to play golf. Yeah, I mean, I think it's personality dependent, obviously, but I think that a really big thing is obviously just learning how to play the game necessarily, you know? Yes, yes. Because I think a majority of the time, you're not gonna have your best stuff. Exactly. But like, how good is your like 60th to 70th percentile of golf, yeah, right? Yeah. That is what makes great golfers good, right? Yeah. Speaking of knowing how to play golf, it's things like don't leave yourself 74 feet on really fast greens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hit it. Or it's, you know, really being smart about having good speed on putts, things like that. Things that I'm definitely not portraying right now. It's a whole thing, what is it? It's a uh, do, do as I, I say. say not, not as, as I, do. I do. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe I'm just bad. No, I'm bad. No, you made a hole in one. You're not bad. <laughs> that takes so much skill. It does. All right, I got a little left to rider. Let's try to make this thing right out the gates. For this video, right out the gates. Not right out the gates for us. Is there a little bit of slope on this or what? Dude, <laughs> it no kept joke. On trickling. Use all the holes. It's all good. Also, I think what I would say with the wedges, I was lucky to be at like this driving range thing that had like this little course that I could bring a bunch of shag balls and kind of get my distances dialed in. But I would try to find something similar because range balls are not great for trying to dial in your wedges. They don't go the same distance. They don't react the same off the face. But if you could try to dial in your wedges, maybe in like 10 yard incre increments, and that way you can kind of get some feel. I've made a video, I'll put it in the top right corner on uh, how I dialed in my wedges. I do a little game of maximums and minimums. 
you guys can watch that if you guys want to try to dial in your wedges. That's my advice on trying to take your game to the next level, like a big leap in your golf game. Now, back to the kid who can't have any sort of speed control. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've had terrible speed control. If you guys saw the last video, I hit another terrible lag punt and also made the second punt. So. <laughs> All right, yeah, second hole, part five. Our second question, though, will be, do you wear shoes on Hawaiian grass? We currently are not. And that is a question by Jimbo. Jim Guerin, my assistant coach at OU. Uh, he is now at Miami, but let's get to this tee shot, par five, going with the driver. A little pineapple shower right now. A little pineapple, is, we're kind of getting close. Look at that nice little dark cloud. I hope it's good, because it looks, sure looked pretty good in the air. It's kind of low. Yeah, just a touch I guess, low. I guess we are uphill. Looks solid. I mean, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it looks bad. good. Not bad. I think we got a wide fire fairway here. Yeah, it's a pretty wide fairway. This is almost like a Kapalua plantation fairway, but all right, we take those. The actual question, what is the actual question on this hole? Yeah, so our, our, our third question, I guess, of the round is from uh, Michael Pat King, and he says, what is your five-year goal with YouTube? Oof. Five, five years, is, <laughs> that's a long time. That is a long time. I don't know, I, I have a, I don't really love having like goals, goals set out. I feel like it's a little bit restricting and you don't really know what's gonna happen in five years. But if I continue doing all this stuff, I just wanna keep playing some cool courses like we are in this trip in Hawaii with, with Sean. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh, I'm touched. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know we have a few trips lined up here already. I think we're going to Pinehurst area pretty soon. A little spoiler alert for the people that are watching the video. I think we're gonna be playing Tobacco Road, which I saw on Instagram and a few little promo posts. That place looks actually sick. I look red from all the Mai Tais, but. <laughs> and then we also have a trip in Canada, which I think is gonna look unbelievable on camera. Dude. Dude, yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. Especially with Shaler, how good he's getting with the drone. Shaler's getting solid and dialing us oh in. My but Lord. I just want to keep showing you guys like really cool golf courses. Obviously, I'm more the type that likes to play like straight up golf, playing with good players as well. Like, I don't know. I, I like to sh just show good golf at like some really, really cool, good looking courses and just kind of, I don't know, show you guys if you guys were to make a trip at a certain place, you, you guys should go check out that place. All right, I got 265, 260 adjusted. A little bit into the wind. Uh, I'm gonna have to yam on this three wood for it to get there, but I'll, I will attempt to yam. This is a yam attempt, everybody. <laughs> a barefoot yam attempt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I got the left ball today. For a guy that's never been in a bunker barefoot, I am. That's gonna be my third bunker barefoot. <laughs> Just, yeah. We're getting rained on. A little pineapple shower, huh? That's okay. The nice thing is that these things blow over pretty quick. White shorts was a great call there today, Sean. Well done. Nipples will be out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think it needs a sprinkler head hop, but... Got some firm fairway hops. I like that. I on the green. It. You're putting. Also, I've kind of been seeing lately that there's just been a lot of collabs on YouTube with a bunch of different golfers, which I am not opposed to at all. I just don't want to make that my crutch. I don't want to make that like the reason why I become bigger or whatever. Like, I mean, I hope I become bigger, but I just don't want that to like be the reason why. And I just want to, I don't know, the whole saying of like, if you build it, they will come. Mm. If we just make a bunch of good content, make a bunch of good videos, me and Sean, Shaler with the edits, I think it'll work out just fine. You know, just keep keep showing you guys some good golf courses, have some good solid matches. Hopefully me and Sean and yeah. me and, I don't know, whoever, whoever it is, Anybody. anyone, anyone I'm, I'm playing with. Uh, I wanna do a team thing. I want, I want somebody to come challenge you and me. Exactly, so, you know, I don't know what's in the pipeline like that far down the road, five years, quite a long time, but I think if we just keep making good videos, like you guys have been seeing, like shaler has been doing, I think we'll be all good. And keep making hole in ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is raining, my feet are wet, and I'm in sand. <laughs> so I think the sand the sand's gonna stay on my feet for a while. But I got a little hump to kind of work it over. Well, it doesn't 
doesn't matter because I hit it too far anyway. I really didn't think I hit it that far. I thought it was going to check up a little bit. Give me a rake. Give me a rake. Give me a rake. There's one over there. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Hey, man. Dude, again, that flower is so pretty on you. Thank you. Uh, I got a big left to right breaker here for my eagle putt. Hopefully we have better speed than the previous hole. Uh, yeah, just working on my egg putting out here in Wiley. Eh? Mush. Mush. It's a sled dog term. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, no wonder I hit this ball so far. I didn't realize it was so sloped this way. I should have taken some time, but up the hill. I think it's moving a little left to right. It's a missed opportunity on a par five. You know, after I hit my previous slag putt really, really far past the hole, I was a little nervous. So, anyway, let's clean this one up. I say it so casually when I'm playing a seven footer, two and a half feet outside the hole. I hit it way too hard. That was a terrible putt. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, we both just bought this par five. Oopsies. Sean, what, do you got any plans for YouTube? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know. I feel like I'm a. Uh, I got a pretty strong grip on Quan's coattails right now. I do really love setting up these awesome trips for Quan. I don't even know if that's public knowledge or not, but uh, no. Sean Sean sets up all these trips. Like he's his agent fees are about to go through the roof. That's right, especially after hole in one. What? <laughs> no. Um, I mean, I, I really love setting up these trips, especially selfishly because I get to go on them. I mean, had a tough week last week at first stage at Q School, and there's nothing better than a nice little Hawaii trip to kind of make that feel a little better. But I think, uh, I, I don't really know. I, I see how hard Quan and Shaler uh, work on this channel. And I, I just don't know, like starting from scratch, really, if I could do that. But I mean, I know you guys just end up seeing the videos, but you guys have no idea the amount of hours that go into these videos. I mean, it's really incredible. It's really cool to get a front row seat to this. So I don't really know if I have a plan for YouTube, but um, I do plan on maintaining that firm grip on those coattails and being on a couple more of these trips. You're not on my coattails. You are welcome on my coattails. <laughs> I don't even. Please ride my coattails. That's not even coattails. You. This is a symbiotic re relationship. Ooh, a little biology. <laughs> All right, uh, we got another one from from Jonathan zero one three three zero Chai <laughs> says, uh, "Will you return to professional golf?" Ooh. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I might have sent in a video or I don't know. Maybe I didn't but I mean I'm enjoying what I'm doing now with the content stuff and I might do Q school next year uh, a little spoiler alert again You guys are definitely getting some spoilers for the upcoming plans But I might try doing Japan tour Q school next year making a little series out of that It's just I feel like I've kind of scratched that itch with the professional golf stuff like in 2019 2018 I was really like I felt like I needed to go do it and I hadn't done it and I felt like I was good enough And now I feel like I've done it and I I feel comfortable with what I've done and I you know I just feel like I've scratched that itch now, but Japan tour is the one tour that I feel like man I wish I tried that one because I think personally I think it's the best kept secret in pro golf. The competition's not as good as European Tour or, or definitely not as good as Corn Ferry Tour. And the money's just as good, maybe slightly underneath it. So it's like, it's not that big a difference money-wise, but competition is not that good. So I, I feel like that's the one tour I kind of want to go do. So I might go do that at Q School next year. But I don't know. I think this kind of goes back to the thing that Sean was saying that he, um, he missed on first stage. But I just want to, I'm not saying this as a, as a pity thing, but there's a lot of notable names that you guys will know on the PGA Tour that have missed out on Q School. Like, I'm gonna go look through my phone right now. Uh, I remember see. there's a graphic of like, I remember at second stage one time, it was like right there, like T50 something else. It was Brooks Kepka, Jordan Speed. Yes. Right there. Like one, one, two at uh, Craig Ranch, I think in like 2017. 2016. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Brooks yeah. Kepka and J Jordan Speed missed Q School at the same site, the same day, obviously. Yeah, I and think they're doing okay. I think you guys know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else is there? Holy Harry crap, Higgs. those are some pretty impressive names that have uh, that have missed at first stage. Some more guys that you guys have probably heard of. Russell Knox, missed by 19, missed by 9, missed by 6 at first stage. Harry Higgs, missed by 18 at first stage. Patton Kazire, missed by 5 at first stage. 
Seamus Powered never got through Q School. Justin Sa is more of a younger guy, never got through Q School. I'm not certain on this, but I think Will Zalatoris as well has never gotten through Q School, just did a bunch of Monday qualifiers. Yeah, he got through via, he got special temporary status through uh, Monday in and, and, and playing well exactly. on the sponsor invites uh, Corn Ferry. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I know there's probably a bunch of names that I'm missing out, but like Q School is very very hard to get through so i know sean just missed out on first stage and it, it, it sucks it doesn't make it any better but it's just i don't know it's kind of brutal that your entire basically job for the next year is kind of boiled down to just like one week of golf i mean look i'm not saying that we have the solutions where it's a lot of it's a lot of bitching going on right now but yeah like, there is a lot it's of a lot money. of bitching, but like it's just so cutthroat that's what i'm trying to highlight here it's just mm -hmm. it's so cutthroat it's so hard to get through i mean there's a lot of guys that you guys know that haven't made it through and they're doing just fine on the pga tour so Mm -hmm. Golf's just hard on the professional level, but I'll get I'll get more into detail on the professional side of golf here in a little bit. Okay. Dude, if I had a third Mai Tai, I would be in trouble. Hey. Dude, I, I, I've, I've drank too many Mai Tais. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Dude, these white shorts with this pineapple shower I'm about to put on my OnlyFans channel. Jeez Louise. <laughs> You are something else. <laughs> All right, let's try to get one in the fairway here. It's been a little wait because of the rain. Wow. Aye. More passion, more energy. <laughs> more footwork. All right, from the teeth of the box, this looked kind of like a uh, like a pickleball court or something like that. But yeah, shout out windscreen for saving my ball, being in bounce. Um, I have 117 yards under this tree. Man, I would love to blame the water on the face, but I definitely just left the face open about six degrees and that's why it's sliced. So I'm just gonna kind of try to hit a punch seven and hopefully just somehow get lucky and nail the number. Kind of hit the trees. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, go in. Oh, I thought it was going faster. I thought it was going faster too. Honestly, that was pretty sick, man. That was a pretty good shot. All right, Sean just hit a pretty good shot. I don't really know what it looked like over there, but it looks like he clipped some trees. But I got 118, a little bit of rain. Probably gonna go with the 51 degree, try to hit it 118. Bomb squad. Not to go so far. Dang it. But yeah, with the whole pro golf stuff, I mean, honestly, the expenses, the expenses are so high. I've made a video on the expenses as well. I think I'll, oh yeah, I'll put that, put that link up there in the top left, top right. But I mean, on Corn Ferry, it was like legitimately, I mean, if you're cheap skating everything, it's probably 80 grand for the whole season. Realistically, it's probably more like 100 grand for the whole season. So it's like, yeah, you can play some decent golf and uh, have some good finishes, but you literally might be breaking even for the entire year, which I don't know, you might be, might've made 100K tournament winnings wise, but what you have to show for it isn't really a whole lot. So I loved doing it when I was doing it, but I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm 31 now. And that's one of the questions you guys were asking. I'm 31, so I feel like I should be making like some amount of something at this age and it was cool to be able to chase that dream and not have money matter a whole lot and be more on the dream side of things but at, at a certain point it just starts becoming a financial kind of a dumb decision honestly I mean is there more glory in playing professional golf and you know winning tournaments and having top five finishes and all that so, absolutely it feels amazing you feel like you're on top of the world it feels so good but on the financial side of things, you're not really making a whole lot and you're doing it for a dream and respect to all those people to, that, are, that are still chasing their dreams and, and going for it. Um, I mean, I was in the same boat. It's just, it's tough. It's really tough to try to make money. The number that you guys see on tournament winnings is half the story. They might not be making hardly anything for the whole year and financially, it's really tough. All right, Shayla, pretty good shot there, really. I mean, I really didn't have much to expect. We'll see. It's kind of up and then down and then moving right. There you go, there you go. All right, got a little right to left, or up the hill. Brought my Mai Tai out so we can watch this putt go in. Ow! Donkeys. It's like croquet. 
feel like I putted that like croquet. You know what this reminds me of? Putting, uh, walking around barefoot. I used to walk around barefoot all the time as a kid in New Zealand. Like it was like a really common thing for people in New Zealand. Going back to my roots. All right, uh, Luke, honey, H-U-N-N-E. -N -N -E. What? Yeah, H-U-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Oh. <laughs> honey, hewn? I don't know, could be either or. What was college golf like? And give the goods and the bads. And hey, Luke wants you to be honest. Okay, all right, we'll be honest here. Let's hit our shots first though. 152, I'm gonna go with the soft nine iron. I forgot my gloves, so. <laughs> I'm going barefoot and bare hand. Yep. Somebody bear. Bear. Thank God he's not bare chested or bare bottomed. What does two hole in ones in a YouTube video get you? <laughs> oh, I took too much off. I took too much off. Oh man, where'd you get nine? I had a nine, try to chip it. Yeah, I think it was the right club. Just yeah. a little bit of rain kind of makes it fly a little shorter. Probably. I just babied it. Yeah. Other way, get left. I know, it's fading. It's supposed to be drawn. Hey, Pin Heisman. Pin Heisman. Yep, that's that's not terrible at least. I'm still swinging it a little left. I need to swing it a little more out to right field. Uh, all right, college golf, man. I feel unfortunately that feels like a long time ago. I, I don't like saying that. <laughs> but I know. Sean played at Gonzaga up in Washington. If you guys didn't know, I played at OU. I'll start with the bads. Go with the bads news first. And I again, like you said, be honest. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I really didn't care about the school part. I, I, looking back, I probably should have cared more. Not gonna say that it really hindered me in terms of like life, I don't know, opportunities, but like I probably should have paid more attention in school. I just, I just didn't really care that much for school. I don't know, it was, I guess it was bad habits coming from high school. It's definitely one of my regrets, but it was a bit tough on the student athlete scheduling because we gotta have to go to classes, do all our schoolwork, and go to tournaments. But let's be honest, I honestly just focus more on the golf side of stuff. So, in my opinion, and Sean, I think is more of a unicorn. I think I, I just feel like you have to like prioritize one or the other, like school or golf. And I unfortunately prioritize more of the golf stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I think just talking about the cons, yeah, like you have to learn to be able to balance it and it's really yes, hard sometimes. It is. Like you went to a bigger school, so honestly, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say it was actually harder for you because I was actually able to develop a relationship with the teachers and the professors that I knew and be able to be like, hey, maybe can you give me a couple extra days on this assignment? Right. Or a couple days on this paper, a couple days on this test? Yeah. Uh, I think that was really helpful. Uh, but you know, I mean, OU, you go to a class and you're, you're, you're one out of 190, 250 students students, whatever. Pretty big. Yeah, and it's like, they're like, um, yeah, no, I, I, don't, I don't care who you are. Yeah, and yeah. so, I, I think that was a real disadvantage, I think, as far as going to a bigger school. Right. right? Yeah. Give me a, give me a pros. Give, give me a, a pro? pro? Yeah. Um, you know, you get to learn how to play high-level golf for free, right? Yeah. I mean, I know that you gotta pay for school, obviously, right. you know, for a lot of people, but, I mean, for the most part, you know, don't, don't take that for granted, because yes. once you get out to the pro level, obviously everybody wants to play pro golf, but it is expensive. It's Holy expensive. Smoke. And you're, I mean, I wouldn't completely say you're out on your own, but you kind of are out on your own. I mean, it's it's a business. You're you're out there to try to make money playing golf, and why would other people give you your secrets or all that? But like, you have a team around you. You have a coach around you trying to help you out playing better golf. Honestly, personally, I feel like I got really lucky with the coach that I had. I didn't really factor in the coach in my recruiting process. I just thought OU was a sick school, and I got really lucky that Coach Hibble was a very good golfer himself. Like, he was, I think he was the world number one junior golfer, and the year before that was Tiger Woods. Like, that's a big deal. He's still a really good golfer even now, and uh, I, you know, I've said it early in this video, I genuinely did not know how to play golf until I got to college, and he started showing me all these things, and now it's, you know, I go play pro tournaments, and we're like, we're seeing the same stuff at the same time without even, like, saying it out loud anymore. Like, me and Sean earlier, we're looking at a pin, we're like, ooh, that looks a little dicey because of this and that and this and that. It's like, we didn't even say that to each other, and we just, like, knew the exact same things, and... It's just kind of knowing that golf IQ stuff and also being able to travel with your friends and same thing with pro golf. Like you're not technically alone. Like you got some friends on tour and stuff like that, but like they're on their own schedule. You're on your own schedule. So hopefully it, it works out where you line up and get to travel together. But when you're on a team at, at college, you get to travel with your buddies all the time. Uh, you get free gear all the time, which is always nice. You get free flights all the time. I mean, like the stuff in college is free. Like tournament wise, it's free. I'm, I'm, we're not talking about like school stuff. Flights are free, food's free balls, equipment, all that stuff is free and then you get out of college and it's just not. And so, 
yeah, I missed, I miss the friendships in college, all the free stuff in college. College golf was just such a good time. I miss it. Do you miss it? Oh yeah. 100%. Even, I, I mean, I didn't even go that high level program compared to OU. But I mean, still, it's like, you look back and you always end up being like, holy, I mean, like, what I would give to go back. Yes. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. if I only knew then what I know now, yeah. right? The, yeah. re the real world sucks. The real world's hard. <laughs> and, you know, it's easy to think that the real world isn't hard right. whenever you're in that bubble. Yeah. But, hey, don't be in a rush to get out of college. Exactly. Hey, it's a wet lie. It's gonna run up the face. <laughs> that was weird. Oh, it's a bunch, bunch of grass, grass in front of the ball. I just didn't hit that very well. I guess I didn't say that in time for him to hit his shot. Oopsies. <laughs> Alright, this should break just a little left, even though the grain's going right. It's kind of down the mountain. Oh my, two. Up and down from the tee box. Up and down from the box. It's like you on that par five earlier today. <laughs> par five, quotation marks. <laughs> My goodness, I'm kind of ramming them. Dude, that was hammered. Yeah, I was gonna have like four feet coming back if I missed that. Thankfully, it hit the back. The the a little thing on the side I would say as well is don't, don't go to a school that is like too outside of your reach in terms oh, of like yes. ranking wise. Good you don't want to go, like I understand, you're a great player. Cool, I understand. But maybe think twice about going to school like Oklahoma State or OU or whatever. Like that's like really, really high up there on the rankings. Like you kind of want to be a little bit of the big fish in a small pond, but not so much of a big fish that's so comfortable for you. Like you want to be pushed. Yes, you want to be pushed, but you don't want to be pushed so hard that you don't even make it on the traveling team. It, it really takes a hit on your confidence. Yeah, I think the number one priority when you are, ooh, priority, um, <laughs> when you are a junior golfer, it really needs to be, can I play right out of the gates as a freshman? Yes. Can I play every single event? Because that was a nice thing. I mean, Gonzaga, yeah, it's not, you know, the sexiest school ever, but I played every single event regardless of if I was playing well or not. And I think going into pro golf, especially because that was my goal afterwards, yeah. that that's what you have to do because uh, if you go to an Oklahoma State or something like that and you're, you're the kind of player that I was in high school and you're, you know, maybe you wouldn't have necessarily made the top five if you didn't play well at qualifying, I think that you have to play tournaments when you're not playing well. I think yes. that's the number one priority because you gotta figure it out. You yes. have to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I was in the same boat. My, my, my first two years at OU, I had the chipping hips to be fair, but like I was not playing well at all. Did not make any of the teams qualifying. And I mean, you'd be, I don't care what your name is. If that happens for two years, your confidence is getting shot. Like you could be whoever in the world. It's, it's tough. It's really tough. So again, just finding that right sweet spot for which college to pick is, is a big deal. All right, fifth hole, I think we got a little dog to the right. I will answer the question here. Did joining Good Good make me a worse golfer? There's a little, uh, little bit more to it, but let's hit this tee shot and I'll get it going after this tee shot. It's a little cut. That's all right. Oh well, I'm just trying to go back to the fairway. Yeah, I don't really feel like we're supposed to be teeing off from here, but we didn't really know any better. Sorry, Wiley of Blue. Uh, yeah, so did I get better or worse since joining Good Good? Uh, well, short answer, yeah, I got worse. But there's, again, like I said, more to it. I literally don't even have a place to practice anymore. I haven't play, had a place to practice for a little more than a year now. I mean, I there's a place I go to like maybe once every two months or once a month or something, but like, don't really think I can count that. But it's not good good that's made me worse. It's myself that has made me worse. I just don't have a place to practice. I'm, like, I just I just feel like, unfortunately, I, I guess, I don't really feel like I have that light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel to kind of practice for. And honestly, like, yeah, sometimes I get, I get comments, not really a whole lot, like 98% of you guys are all positive. But I do get some comments saying like, whoa, this guy's a pro. It's like, I literally do not care about those comments because I, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with, with what I've done with pro golf. And mm -hmm. I don't really care what you say. Like, I know what I am and what I'm not. Like, I know I didn't play on the PGA Tour. I'm not a PGA Tour player. 
but I also know the caliber of player I am and what I've done with my career. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with what I've done. So, um, I don't know, I just don't really have that insecurity, but like since joining Good Good, yeah, my game's gotten a little rustier, a little rough around the edges, but that's not because of Good Good. That's just because I just haven't really had a place to practice, nor have I really practiced in general. Like it's not Good Good's fault. It's, it's my fault. I don't know. just haven't, you know, not a priority how anymore. Exactly. It's not, it's not really a priority anymore. Exactly. Like how can I, how can I expect to you know, play good golf all the time when I don't even really put on all that work? It's just not really how it works. And I, and I know that. All right. 127 yards in the fairway. Thankfully, I'm just going to hit a full 50 and see if we can make another birdie. I got the Yanks, bro. The I Yankees? The Yanks. <laughs> oh, it's down that little hill. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Got the Yankees. Man, I need to be better at playing golf barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got 115 in the rough. Gonna go with the 51 degree. Just try to hit like one, 105. <laughs> what? I was gonna say, right after I hit that, I felt like it was pretty solid on the number 105, but clearly not, it went a little far. Yep, that's not anywhere close. <laughs> it was tracking. It was kind of tracking. On the camera. Yeah, it's good. Oh, I love how well, I say it. He gives it to me after, yeah, after, after I make it. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> that's also not very close. Well, I will say the line was pretty close. I just freaking yammed it. All right, all right. What is our match even at? Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> I think I'm one under maybe and you're even. Even? Look at that. Sean is just better than me. That's... He yeah. is. He just is. All right, uh, secondary question here if from Minger1968 is, what club do you like to chip with around the green? Oh. Oh, I actually, okay, all right. Uh, short answer, what is your short answer? Well, my short answer is I always go to the 60 unless I have a ton of green to work with. Then I kind of work off of the 60 to the 55 and the 50. That is exactly what I was gonna say, but I don't really use my 50. Yeah. Don't really use my 50. I mean, there are times, but like it's pretty rare. Yeah, it's and gotta I, be like extenuating circumstances, like a ton of green to work with or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, all right, what do we got, 195? Yeah, 195, that was a good question though. There's more to it. There's yeah. more to it. It's also a personal preference, right? Yes, yes exactly. That's a hook. Oh. Go on the road. <laughs> Go on the road. Short of the bunker. Or in the down slope of the bunker. Or in the down slope of the bunker. Okay, use that one right there. Use that too. I can't because you hit a bad shot. Oh, that's a good point. I'm superstitious. That's a good point. That's a good point, good point, good point. <laughs> bye bye. Also going with a six iron here. Do something dumb. Kick left. Oh, what the? Flat on the ground? It's okay. Uh, yeah, so we did already say that we both like look using our 60s. And I think that's, again, like he said, I think it's subjective. It's, you know, each player is a little bit different. But I think me and Sean are both comfortable with our 60 degree. <laughs> and by that, I'm going to get really nerdy with this answer. It's because we know the smash factor coming out of the, the wedges. So smash factor is basically... It's the relationship of ball head, the ball, ball speed and club end ball speed, speed right? and club end speed. And so when you see smash factor 1.5 on a driver, it means the ball is going 1.5 times the speed mm -hmm. of the club head. Correct. What you want to see on wedges is the ball leaving the club face with a one smash factor, meaning the ball is leaving with the same speed as the club off the face. Mm -hmm. And so with the 60, I think we know the, the, the smash factor. And we, basically that just means we know the feel of the club. My thing is, I've never agreed with using, personally, 9-iron, pitching wedge, 8-iron, 7-iron around the greens because those clubs have different smash factors. If you guys notice, hitting uh, chip shots with those clubs, they'll come off the face hotter, meaning higher smash factor. And so, in my opinion, and I think in Sean's opinion, you'd rather know the smash factor of the club you like using the most and use that club often instead of kind of using a bunch of clubs where maybe you don't know the smash factor as much Sean just got a terrible eye. <laughs> Smash factor as much, 
and because of that reason, you also have less feel around the greens as well. So me and Sean's opinion, use the club that you're most comfortable with. For us, it's 60 degrees almost every time, unless there are situations where you have more green and you want to kind of run it up a little bit more. But that is the nerdy answer of why we use more of the 60 degrees most of the time when we, when we have shots around the greens. What do you think about that? No, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, I think that, I think it's a lot of just like what you have, whatever you're comfortable with, right? I mean, chipping is already, can potentially be such like a uniquely like uncomfortable thing that, I mean, I think especially as golf courses grow and like get tougher and you know, there's a lot of elevated greens. So you do use a 60. I mean, don't listen to your grandpa when he says, oh, well, I used to only chip with a pitching wedge yeah, or 48. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like the game has changed. And right. so be comfortable with whatever you're using to pitch it with, because I mean, that's really the number one thing and like Quan, Quan's gone through a tough dark time with like chipping around the greens I know I have you just you just have to find something comfortable yes. yeah uh, speaking of comfortability here I am with an incredibly uncomfortable lie um, <laughs> this is, this is brutal. needs to be on high alert here I mean I guess I mean I just have to hit it absolutely perfect it's gonna kind of come out I guess like a ball first spinner but it's gonna kind of be low oh my gosh I don't even know Oh my, okay, that was about to turn out way better than it. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I'll take it. I thought I was gonna hit Brittany sitting in the cart over there. So yeah, um, we'll take that. Those, These are the lies. Honestly, back to the first question, when did you kind of get better at golf? You just need to make a bogey from here. Like you don't even need to make par. You need to make a bogey from here and get the heck out of here. That is a great point. Yeah. You wanted to keep the big numbers. You want to keep the double yes. squares off the, off yeah. the scorecards. No double square. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, just keep all the squares off the card. Okay, just no chip squares. It in. Shayla says no squares. No squares. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> I early walked it. I early walked it. But that was good. That was looking good. Yep, we'll take a four. All right, Quan, see if you can make birdie. I can't hold on the ball. All righty, a little right to lefter. What is this? Twenty-five feet. I, I, I'm too hammered to even tell how far this is. I'm kind of spinning. spinning. What a quote. What a quote. I'm kind of spinning. You just pured a six iron from 195 and you're like, <laughs> I can't see straight. <laughs> nah. Alright. That's good. Why Take is it so hard to make 20 putters? The best in the world can mm. only make uh, 8%. What's that sounds about right. What yeah. Think it is? 20, 20 feet. Maybe 10? I mean, I know 8 footers 50 50. 8 footers 50 50. Best, yeah. in, best in the world. PJ Tour average 20 feet? I think it is around 10. Put it on the screen, Shaler. Fact check your work. Yes, sir. <laughs> either in a pool or totally fine. <laughs> I think it's good. Oh yeah, you're totally good. fine. You're yeah. Good. I, pool was not in play. I felt like it was fine, but I was like, I, depth perception, you're going up the mountain, it's kind of tough to tell. But all right, Quan, right there. We're hammered. No. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh goodness. Them pools be in play now. Pool. Get the kids in the house. Oh, you're okay. We're in the fairway. Yep, you're fine. Probably not fair. I'm, I'm probably in the rough. It's all good. I just added 30 holes to this hole just for no reason. 30 holes 30. To, the, to this hole or? 30 yards to this hole, goodness. Maybe he is a lightweight. Yeah, I am a lightweight. From Bendy underscore Earth. Bendy. Why don't meat pies get the love in the USA? Because majority of people don't know what that is, including me. Do you actually not? No. Have you, never, have you never had a meat pie? No. Because really? I'm an American. No, we don't we don't do that. What is a meat pie? Okay, if you guys ever go to Australia or New Zealand, I, I might even say Great Britain. I don't know if they have it or not. I could be, you know, this could be you know fake news. I don't know. But if you guys have a meat pie, if, if you guys have a chance to try a meat pie, you should go try some mince and cheese pie or some steak pie. I genuinely do not know why it's not big in the US. Because it is nice and unhealthy. Like, Americans love unhealthy stuff. Well, yeah, we're all fat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I've thought about it many times. Like, I should just start a meat pie little bakery shop, bring it to the US. I've even looked around in Dallas to, like, find a meat pie shop, and I, and I can't find anything. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why no one's done this. 
I don't know. It could be the next big wave in America. We'll see. <laughs> All right, I got 101, adjusted 104. I'm gonna go with a hard-ish 55 degree. And Brittany's up there, so you better hit a good one. How is that? Is that long? I don't know. Sure, it looks long. I don't know how that's long. I feel like if anything, that would be short. Like me, I'm short. Your flower's about to fall out. Uh -huh. Oh. Whoa. Oh, he tried to save me. That was weird, dude. All right, 80 to 84. That's trippy, dude, that you can see the future. <laughs> All is, right, that is a bit I'm hitting different. it 84. Don't put that in here. That's dumb, dumb. I'm dumb, dumb. 84. With a 55. I feel like it's slightly long, but not terrible. Might have spun. Might have spun. If it's spun, it's good. Yeah. If it's spun, it's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, uh, you Brittany's... got that thumbs up. I got a thumbs up. Hey, I got a thumbs up. I need some sand. There you go. Sean, but not bad. I'm gonna go tap mine in. Okay. All right, don't miss. Ooh. Is that, is that a legal stroke, do you think? Ooh, good question. Um, I think it is. Well, regardless of if it is or not, I would never putt like that, ever. Because <laughs> that felt incredibly uncomfortable. I actually think it is, but someone put in the comments, is that a legal stroke? I think it is, to be fair. All right, I got a little left to, uh, big left to rider. Try to match Sean's birdie. Sean's sneaky been playing pretty decent. Two under for him. I just made all pars. I'm just a boring one under. Yeah, I bogeyed last hole because I'm a dumb dumb. Oh, sorry. One under. I just made all pars because I'm boring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought it was so slippery. There you go. Look at that. I put my one foot with so much confidence. All right, eighth hole, par five, you said? Par five, 560. Five, right. Hit me with the question. All right, uh, Josh Gonda7 wants to know, Gonda. Quan, what's your favorite moment in Good Good that you would go oh. back to and relive? Oh, this is a short question. Uh, it's pretty easy. That very specific moment, that putt that I made at Branson, 19th hole, to win a little Stumps vs. Twigs match with the lightning going off in the background, that was pretty cool. I, I would say that's probably my favorite moment very close second is probably that little hole in one that I made on the little par three course. I mean, I would have to agree. That yeah, was, that's gotta be pretty close. Yeah, that was pretty close. Uh, yeah, that was good. But par five, Sean's going first. Okay. I got the hooks today. Same. Yeah, go. I feel like that's what happens with barefootness. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like, honestly though, yeah, maybe I just need to stabilize my uh, front left foot here. I was gonna say, like you're trying to get on your left side? Yeah, get a little stronger, yeah. you know? <laughs> get my feet a little stronger. Shout out Goda. Woda. Goda. Yeah. <laughs> you can fade it if you heal it. Wham. Look at that. Wham. Take some yardage off, you know, if you heal it, but it'll still fade. I'm yammy. Mm. I just don't want to hit a hook, man. I've hit so many freaking hooks the last like seven holes. It's so funny, I'm one under though. I hit that wet shot I hit in the last hole was pretty nice. Brittany oh, showed it to me know? on the camera. I hadn't seen it. That was pretty good. Yeah, I'm a pro golfer who's like happy about finally making a birdie with a wedge. Jeez Louise, man. Hold yourself to a higher standard. Uh, all right, I got 264 down to 250. I'm gonna kick a field goal right between these palm trees and see where it ends up. Dude, it didn't draw. Frick. I feel like it kicked left though. It did. Okay, all right. Honestly, pretty good swing. Considering I've been hooking everything, I would have hooked it into somebody's backyard and killed their golden retriever. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Okay, I got 232 adjusted. I think it's like 245 actual. I probably need to be hitting a four iron. I do have a four iron. Do I think I can hit it full distance with bare feet? No, but I'm still gonna hit it. Nice. That will for sure not go the full distance. <laughs> Brittany's gonna be mad she went up there. <laughs> Dude, I keep short sighting myself out here. All right, Shaler. I've hit the shot bad enough that I don't actually think I'm short sighted. Short sighted is more over there. I'm right here, so I got a little bit of work with, a little bit of green to work with. Uh, I gotta still send it up high though.
Not too bad. Still got a putt prepared. Okay, uh, pretty, <laughs> I mean, honestly, pretty good spot. There's a lot of worse things that could have happened there with that shot. Got a lot of green to work with. Downhill lie though, so I'm gonna go to the 60, kind of hit a little bit more of a runner. Hopefully it's, it kind of just works down the hill to the right and maybe in the wall? It's like rolling like a putt. That could be nice. Wow. That is nice. Thanks. I didn't say thanks, dude. Can I dunk it like you? Yeah. Dunk it. Okay. <laughs> hey, nice pull. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking my birdie. That's unbelievable. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my goodness. That couldn't have gone better. <laughs> that couldn't have gone better. Couldn't have gone better. <laughs> All right, I feel like I got the Asian glow going so bad. I'm so red right now, aren't I? A little bit, yeah. It's K. Okay. I got a little left to rider. Ah! 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 Dude, I've made all pars on this nine. Final hole coming up? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since I've made all pars on nine holes. It might happen. I got the spins. Final hole, me and Sean have decided to make this uh, a $100 birdie donation mm -hmm. if we make this, or if we make a birdie on this hole. How but, about how about $20 for a par, I like $100 that. for a birdie? I like that, because this flag is kind of hard for, if we're hitting driver off the tee box, yeah. with how narrow the fairway is, but yeah, $20 for par, $100 for birdie on this hole. I'm going to be the one that's asking us the question on this one. Oh, okay. What is your favorite tour that you've played on and why? You know, it's uh, that's a really interesting question. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it just from a money standpoint. It definitely wasn't financially a great tour. Sure. At sure. least for me. But I would say the McKenzie Tour, which is now just like PGA Tour Canada, was a great tour as far as for an individual coming out of college to just learn how to play pro golf. Yeah. I think that, that was a great tour as far as you're playing multiple weeks in a row. You're just trying to figure out kind of what, what suits you the best. Like, you know, okay, am I a guy who practices on travel days? Am I not? Things like that. Yeah. I think that was a great tour for me. And that's, I guess, kind of what I will go with. Right. How about you? Schedule wise, Canada actually makes sense for someone that's coming right out of college because mm -hmm. it starts in the summer. I guess it's now called PG Tour Americas. I don't know. Yeah. Regardless, anyways, PG yeah. Tour Canada up there. It is good schedule wise. And, and also, it's, I think it's shorter courses, is it not? Is it not? Yeah, so, so they are kind of kind of interesting golf courses because I don't necessarily think they're super indicative of the ones that you'll see on the Corn Ferry Tour, especially the PJ Tour. Yeah. But nonetheless, you just kind of learn almost how to play pro golf, right? You gotta make birdies up there. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah do you? Yeah, you yeah. can't make a lot of pars. <laughs> uh, short answer, we'll get into a little bit more, but my short answer is PJ Tour China. Oh, shock. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be a little bit of a biased answer, but <laughs> let's get to our tee shots here. I really hope that's in the fairway because I would hate to be in the rough. Is that fairway? Fairway. Good swing. Small wind. Good swing. Small winds. Maybe I can break this park streak. I just don't want to hit a hook for the first time in a while. For the first time in forever. Oh my lordy. How good oh is that? Oh my. Two balls in the... I don't want to really call it. I'll say it after. No, I'm, I'm calling it fairway. Yep. Oh, that's fairway. Two balls in the fairway at the tightest part of the hole. Tightest fairway we had to hit, try to hit, too. Exactly. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, $100 birdies, right? Yeah. Woo -wee. Uh, yeah, obviously, like I said, my answer is a little bit biased a little bit, but PG Tour China because I won out there, I think it was the fifth event, and honestly, it was my best golf I think I've played 2019. Um, I, th I think I shot 19 under, maybe it was 18, maybe it was 17, I, I think it was 19. It was just a lot of fun. Honestly, I mean, don't get me wrong, the food poisoning was not fun at all, but it was kind of like all the Americans, we had like a little group there, it was a great group of guys, and it was like, it was kind of like we were struggling together. Yeah, all, all of us didn't know the language, didn't know how to get around, we all are using Google Translator to get around, but it was just so much fun to just like, be sent into a completely foreign territory, and all of us try to get around. Uh, I mean, I know you spent, what, three weeks out there? Yep, yeah, I went the first three weeks of the year that you played really nice there. Yeah. 
I just knew I was out man and out gun. <laughs> if, if I'm playing a tour with Luke Kwan and Max McGreevy, oh, that is, I better get out of there. Max McGreevy, yes. Me, no, not so much. <laughs> but it was just a lot of fun that year. Like getting to see such a different environment. I don't know, and that also kind of sparked my love for travel as well, because I think that's part of my reason why I love traveling to a place that is significantly different. Like, personally, I'm not saying I'm right, but personally, I don't really think traveling within the US mainland is really a whole lot of traveling. I like going to go see like places in Europe, places in Asia, places in like, you know, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, like places where it's like sig significantly different culture, hearing different accents and just seeing how they live life on a complete other side of the planet. I, I really enjoyed that and I still do. Like I, I want to go play golf in Europe and put it on my YouTube channel and you know, Germany's on the list, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, all those uh, Scandinavian countries. That would be cool, Sean. It would be. Yeah, I played up. a little DP world. Oh, oh, are you asking your agent? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we could do that. Hey, uh, yeah, everybody uh, DM me or something like that on Instagram. I don't know. We need some, uh, we love some hints and yes. uh, we got some cool trips lined up, but always love suggestions. Yes. I think me and Sean are also pretty similar with the travel stuff. Like mm -hmm. we, we love traveling. Oh yeah. Sean's dad is a pilot as well. So. Yeah. I grew up traveling. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a ton of people, like you said, in America that just kind of end up in their bubble. Yes. And I think that's why people in Europe and all over the rest of the world are kind of so much more cultured. Because right. Right. Americans tend to stay in their bubble. You know? I, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. 51 to 53 hit a great tee ball here. Wedges haven't been good all week, but all of a sudden, magically, on the 15th hole, I hit a great wedge shot. Would love to end strong here. If I get up and down from here, that's another $100 to the Lahaina victims. And so, let's get them an extra 100 bucks. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Freaking A, that sucked, dude. I have a birdie putt, but that was just so like, like the face was this, like this coming on the way down. And it's hard to hit a golf shot like that. Uh, I gotta make the putt though. All right, I got 64 yards. I don't really know exactly where Sean hit it, but hopefully a little closer than his. Up the hill, I cannot see nothing. I don't know. From here, it looks like I almost dunked it, but we shall see. I wish I dunked it, but I still got a little bit left here. I think it's a good amount left to right. Eh, decent amount left to right, but it's gonna be pretty quick. Oh. <gasps> Goodness. That thing was going by the hole by a lot, but I'm glad that hole's there to catch the ball. All right, Quan made his 100 extra bucks. I mean, mine's snapping right to left, so, Ooh, I dude, I gotta get it way out there. Go! Oh. <laughs> no, what? Two birdies, two birdies with the finish? The hey, you just reminded me, that's, that's, go that way. That's 200 bucks donation on this hole. Hey, that was awesome. That's a nice way to finish out Hawaii. Dude, hey, shout sick. out Sean for setting up this trip. <laughs> dude, he is, he Thank is, you. well, first of all, he's a way better people person than I am. Let's just get that on video. I try. I try. <laughs> Brittany's stoked that it's over. Look at her. She's like, it's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like I said, I'm a man of my word. I'm gonna donate. What was the total? 1760? 1760. 1760 with the help of a hole in one. One time donation. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, now I gotta put my information in. I'll put this in, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching the Hawaii series. It's been really cool to show you guys some warm climate while you guys are in the winter probably. But if you guys have made it all the way to the end of the video, make sure you give me a like. It really helps me out if you guys do that. If you're part of the 6% that are watching that are not subscribed, what are y'all doing? Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Hey guys, if you're wanting my help to improve your golf, I put everything I know into my two programs here. In this one, I show you everything that you need to see in your swing in order to be a good ball striker. And if you don't see these things, I show you how to fix it. And in this one, I show you the course management knowledge that elite level players use to play good golf. And these are the things that I wish I knew a long time ago. If you want more information, check out the links in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support me and my journey, it'd be awesome to have you as one of my patrons where you get access to a private group where I do live streams after my tournament rounds, have exclusive content for patrons only, and even do the occasional giveaway with signed putter head covers. Information about that is also in the description below.